Today I'll show you how to solve radical equations. A radical equation is an equation where you have an x under the root. So, for example, the square root of x equals 3, or the square root of x minus 1 minus 2 equals 0, or the third root of x plus 2 equals 3 are radical equations. The square root of 9 plus x equals 4, for example, is not a radical equation. Because the x is not under the root. Let's start with this easy example. The square root of x equals 3. When solving radical equations, the first step is to isolate the root on one side of the equation which is already done in this example. The square root of x stands alone for itself on the left-hand side of the equation. The second step is to square the square root to get rid of the square root. Squaring the square root cancels out the square root and the square. But don't forget also to square the right-hand side of the equation. 3 squared is 9, so we get x equals 9. When solving radical equations with an even index, like in this example, we have to check our solutions by plugging them into the original radical equation. When you square a radical equation, you sometimes get a solution to the squared equation that is not a solution to the original radical equation. We call this solution an extraneous solution. So always check your answers to verify if they really fit into the original radical equation. I will make an extra video about that. So let's plug in 9 for x and we get the square root of 9 equals 3. So 9 is a solution and we are done with this problem. Let's say we have the square root of x minus 1 minus 2 equals 0. The first step is to isolate the radical by adding 2 to each side of the equation. Minus 2 plus 2 cancel each other out. And 0 plus 2 is 2. Now the second step is to square each side of the equation to cancel out the square root. So after cancelling out the square root and the power of 2, we get x minus 1 equals 2 squared, which is 4. After adding 1 on both sides of the equation, we get x equals 5. Don't forget to check the solution if it's true. We can check if our solution is true by substituting the 5 for x. Five minus one is four and the square root of four is two. and 2 minus 2 is 0. So we solved the problem properly. Let's look at the next example. The third root of x plus 2 equals 3. In this example, we don't need to isolate the radical because it's already by itself on the left side of the equation. So we can move on to the second step, which is to cube both sides of the equation. By cubing the third root, 
The third root and the cubing cancel each other out, which is what we wanted. So on the left side we get x plus 2. And on the right side we get 3 cubed, which is 27. Subtracting 2 on each side of the equation gives us x equals 25. Checking our answer by substituting 25 for x in the original radical equation gives us the third root of 27, which is 3. So we solve the problem properly. Let's look at an example where we have two radicals instead of one, unlike our previous examples. The square root of 3x minus 2 plus the square root of x equals 2. The first step is to isolate the radical on the left hand side. So we subtract the square root of x. on both sides of the equation and we get the square root of 3x minus 2 equals 2 minus the square root of x. To remove the square root on the left side we square both sides. Don't forget the parentheses here. So we get 3x minus 2 equals 2 minus the square root of x in parentheses squared. Let's keep the left hand side of the equation the way it is. On the right hand side of the equation we can apply the second binomial formula which is a minus b in parentheses squared equals a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. If you are not confident about the three most important binomial formulas, feel free to watch my video about them. So we get 4 minus 4 times x squared plus x. Before we square the equation again, to remove the square root, we have to isolate the square root and combine like terms. So after subtracting 4 and x on both sides, We get 2x minus 6 equals negative 4 times the square root of x. And after dividing each side by negative 4, We get negative 1 over 2x plus 3 over 2 equals the square root of x. And after squaring both sides, we get negative 1 over 2x plus 3 over 2 in parentheses squared equals x. Let's flip the negative 1 over 2x and the 3 over 2 
so we can use it with the second binomial formula. nine over four minus six over four x plus one over four x squared equals x. And after subtracting x from both sides, We get 9 over 4 minus 10 over 4x plus 1 over 4x squared equals 0. 10 over 4 is equivalent to 5 over 2. And because of the commutative property for addition, we can write this as 1 over 4x squared minus 5 over 2x plus 9 over 4 equals 0. Let's multiply the whole equation by 4. So we get x squared minus 10x plus 9 equals 0. 1 times 9 is 9, and 1 plus 9 is the opposite of negative 10. If you are not confident with Vieta's formula, feel free to watch my video about how to solve quadratic equations by factoring AC method, grouping, and the Vieta formula. So our solutions are 1 and 9. We have to check our solutions by plugging them into the original radical equation. Three times. 1 minus 2 plus the square root of 1 equals 2. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1 and 1 plus 1 is 2. So our first solution, which is 1, is correct. Let's check our second solution. 3 times 9 minus 2 plus the square root of 9 equals 2. 3 times 9 is 27, minus 2 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 9 is 3. 5 plus 3 is 8, which is not equal to 2. So the 9 is an extraneous solution. So we have only one solution, which is 1, which fits in our original equation. And we are done with this problem. Let's look at 5 times the square root of x equals x. Again, the first step is to isolate the root on one side of the equation. So dividing the equation by 5.
gives us the square root of x equals x over 5. The second step is to square the square root to get rid of the square root. x equals x squared over 25. And after multiplying by 25, we get 25x equals x squared. Subtracting 25x on both sides of the equation, gives us 0 equals x squared minus 25x. x squared minus 25x is equivalent to x times x minus 25. This equation is 0 when x is 0 or when x is 25 because of the zero product property. So our first solution is 0 and our second solution is 25. Now we have to check our solutions by plugging them into the original radical equation. five times the square root of zero equals zero the square root of zero is zero and five times zero is zero 0 equals 0 is correct. So our first solution, x equals 0, fits in our original equation. Let's check if 25 fits in our original equation. 5 times the square root of 25 equals 25. The square root of 25 is 5, and 5 times 5 is 25. Twenty-five equals twenty-five. So our second solution is also correct. And fits in our original equation. Let's look at the next example, which is the square root of x plus 1 plus 1 equals x. After subtracting 1 from both sides, we get the square root of x plus 1 equals x minus 1. And after squaring both sides, We get x plus 1 equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. And after subtracting x and subtracting 1 on both sides, we get 0 equals x squared minus 3x. X squared minus 3x is equivalent to x times x minus 3 and x times x minus 3 is 0 when x is 0 or when x is 3.
So our first solution is 0 and our second solution is 3. Let's check our solutions by plugging them into the original radical equation. Square root of 0 plus 1 is 1 plus 1 is 2 so x equals 0 is an extraneous solution. Let's check if x equals 3 fits in our original equation. 3 plus 1 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, plus 1 is 3. 3 equals 3 is correct. So x equals 3 is a solution for our original equation. And we're done with this problem. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. This video is what I did for you. If you want to do something for me, hit the bell button, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy learning everyone.